Hello everyone and welcome back to the European Research Showcase. My name is Sam Langford, I'm the coordinator for the Global Science Show and I've been instrumental in putting together this event as part of Intersections 2023. Over the next two days we've been sharing researchers from all across Europe showcasing who they are, what they do and why it's awesome. So whether it's video content like this, profiles being shared, threads that have been written, loads of different ways that you can engage with researchers all across the EU. Now, I'm really delighted to be joined by another guest to find out all about who they are and what they do. So, Yasina, hello, how are you doing? Hi there, I'm doing well, thanks for having me. No, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to open up with a question I ask everybody at the very top, which is, who are you and what do you do? Okay, great question to start off with. Um, I'm recently started, I've recently started a position as an assistant professor at the University of Leeds after having been a postdoc researcher for two years. So I did that postdoc work partly in the Netherlands and partly in the UK. And now I'm based in Leeds where the focus of my work is on looking at cardiovascular aging and healthy aging across the lifespan. So I'm, I'm interested in looking at sex differences um, specifically how men and women uh, progress through the years. And one of the things I was interested in for a while was looking at the effects of menopause and how that comes with a lot of changes in the cardiovascular uh, system. So another thing I'm interested in is, is in looking at different interventions. So both exercise and nutrition interventions and specifically ones that are a little more accessible for, say, for example, a clinical population that can't normally do whole body type exercise. Okay, um, so I've got a couple of follow-ups to that, but could you give me just a little bit of an insight into the path that has led you to this? So you, you talked about postdoc work when it came to the Netherlands and UK split and you're now in your current role, but what was the, what was the path like to get here? Yeah, good question. Well, I started off with a master's uh, project in Canada, where I'm originally from. And that kind of really highlighted to me, I always had an interest in exercise physiology. And during that time, that really highlighted to me my interest in maybe applying exercise in more clinical populations. So for example, cardiac rehabilitation, and also in the prevention of cardiovascular disease. Okay, and in terms of moving into this role, uh, Leeds is lovely, but why Leeds? What brought you to that specific place? Yeah, that's uh, also another good question because I never kind of expected myself to end up in the UK, but because I was doing my postdoc in uh, Liverpool, uh, I just had access to a lot of the job posts that were in the area. And this post came up that was so just such a perfect fit for the work that I do and, and the tools that I use that I felt I had to apply. And um, it was, yeah, my first application into an assistant professor role and uh, it was a success, so. Oh, amazing, that's really exciting. Um, in terms of, you mentioned uh, looking at the menopause and sex differences in cardiovascular health, what sort of level of knowledge do we have about the way that menopause has an impact on cardiovascular health? Yeah, there's actually quite a lot of research out there showing that with the loss of estrogen that accompanies menopause, you start to see this um, acceleration in, cardio in vascular aging, in impairments to the vasculature and to the heart. And these changes can be rapid and depending on where someone is in the transition of menopause and, and how uh, far along they are, it, it can present quite differently. And also in their response to exercise, interventions can be quite different uh, depending on you know, how long after menopause, on the spectrum of menopause they are. Okay. And uh, something that I'm like quite interested in, actually, just think you mentioned about kind of 
clinical groups. Um, what 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 particular groups is it you're looking to to work with in this role that you're in? Um, is it something that's going to be lo- like local localized as well? They're looking at populations in the UK and how they're impacted, or is it a wider a wider scope? So it, I'll be looking. I'll be studying patients who are in the UK, mm-hmm. but of course that would apply to you know the broader clinical population. So for example, one of the populations I'm interested in looking at are people who have uh, peripheral artery disease. So these uh, individuals have can have blockages in in some of the peripheral arteries. So for example, in the legs, and that can make it very challenging to walk. With and they often uh, get something called claudication. So, with that comes a lot of pain upon walking. So we're looking at different types of exercise interventions and perhaps even nutritional interventions that could improve blood flow and uh, lower lessen their symptoms. So one of the things that I looked at in my postdoc was looking at these local forms of exercise, like um, hand grip exercise. So simply using a, a hand grip kind of like this, if you can see, and we show that doing like contractions, like dynamic type exercise can actually over a period of time um, show some protection to the vasculature. So I'm looking at applying these more you know, easy to do type exercises in this population that might not be able to do a full walking program or like I mentioned, the whole body type exercises. And something I looked at in my PhD was a a dietary nitrate supplement. And that was in the form of beetroot juice. And so, you know, vegetables and roots that are high in dietary nitrates are known to increase nitric oxide in the body and nitric oxide is a very powerful dilator of blood vessels and so that was one of the supplements i worked with as well and that was done in women actually in postmenopausal women so i'm i'm looking to apply some of these tools some of these uh, methods i've done in the past and these interventions i've looked at in the past to now apply that into more clinical populations okay that is really interesting something following up on actually and thinking about the landscape of the uk in particular is um what what in what way does socioeconomic difference play into this as well because i imagine that definitely will have an impact in terms of exercise and diet and people's lifestyle and how busy they are um is that something that forms part of your work yeah, I, I definitely think about that a lot. And it's kind of one of the drivers for my, you know, interest in looking at forms of exercise that can be done at home. So home-based type interventions and, you know, looking at ways to kind of have some community support. So perhaps even involved in the community aspect mm. in some of these exercises. But it's, it's a really good point because not everyone can have access to you know, fancy gyms or, you know, supervised training programs. Another thing I'm, I'm learning about um, in the UK is that depending on what region you're in, you might have access to various um, different things. So you, you might not have access to a supervised exercise training program in that region in the UK. So, so then it becomes kind of unequal and... Yeah, so so that's kind of what drives my interest in looking at these more home-based type interventions. Mm, yeah, no, absolutely. That definitely seems like it'd be really, really beneficial with that kind of very regionalized differences that we see in the UK. Coming back to the day-to-day work, what does an average day look like for you in this role? Yeah, I find that it's like changed a lot from being a postdoc because during my postdoc, I was more... in in the lab, you know, actually performing studies Hmm. and analyzing data and writing papers. And now it's kind of changed um, in my new role, especially because it's a new role that I I need to think more about bigger picture type stuff. So 
So identifying grants and and writing uh, grants and and looking for collaborations and people who you know might might do something that could add to the work, something that um, you know I don't have expertise in, but perhaps they do. And uh, an example of that is you know I kind of want to add some some cognitive measures into my work. So I'm in the process of identifying someone um, locally who can help me uh, looking at some of those measures as well. So I find it's a lot more writing and, and more kind of big picture thinking. And I imagine that the level of collaboration that you is involved in this must be absolutely key to making any sort of work like this work essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I need to identify um, even even people in the hospital to work mm -hmm. with so they could refer me to patients. Uh, so local groups as well. And um, like I said, if I want to add some more novel measures that I don't have expertise in, I need to identify those people who can help me there. Amazing. Um, well, the time rapidly runs away from us whenever we're doing these. So we are coming towards the end. There's one last thing I wanted to ask, which is if you had say, 30 seconds, an elevator pitch to tell the public audiences about your work, what's the one thing you would tell them? Yeah, I think the overall thing I want to kind of communicate to people is often when we think about including an exercise or nutrition intervention into our life, we think it's going to be, you know, a huge shift in our day to day lives. When in our lab, we're showing that even, you know, these single forms of exercise and, and very short durations of exercise can can already have an impact and can already improve your response to injury and to um, other things as well. So it's it's not a lot to do in order to receive benefits. And I hope that I can change uh, people's perceptions on it. Fabulous. That is a, a really great way to end. Um, before we close, where can people find out more about you and the work that you do if they wanted to? Yeah, so as I mentioned, I'm now at the University of Leeds. And so if, if people want to find me, they can definitely uh, find me on LinkedIn. That's a That would be a great place to connect with me. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Yasina. Folks at home, thank you so much for watching along. If you've got any questions for any of the researchers that we're sharing today and tomorrow, then you can leave them in the comments either above or below, depending on the platform that you're watching on. Um, and if there's anything that we can pass along, we absolutely will do. But please do check out all the other content that is going out as part of the European Research Showcase. There's loads to check out, loads to engage with. But for now, take care and we'll see you all again very soon.